Hi everyone, welcome to today's program. I'm Avi Savar, president of Suzy, and I'm thrilled to be here introducing another major product launch event. For those of you who joined us a couple of weeks ago for our first event of the year, you already know that we have a lot of exciting things planned on our roadmap. We just launched Focus Groups, a critical new offering from Suzy Live. So now not only can you effortlessly run one-on-one -on -one in depth interviews and in-home product tests, but you'll also be able to conduct multi-person focus groups with just a few clicks. Later this year, we're rolling out in-platform quotas, an advanced cross-tabs explorer, more advanced profiling, and even asynchronous video, allowing you to capture unmoderated qualitative video responses at scale. We're working hard to enable your teams with research that's iterative and integrated, bringing together quant and qual and the highest quality audiences into a single connected research cloud. Last week was all about qual. Today is about audiences, global audiences. And what we've heard from you, our customers, is that running global consumer research can be costly, it can be slow, and it's inefficient. And worst of all, it's siloed from all your other insights. Now with Suzy's new global audience offering, all you need to do is define your audience, ask your questions, and get results. We've simplified the pricing, project setup, real-time sampling, and feasibility. And because it's integrated, your global research won't just be more cost-effective, it will also be connected to everything else you do. But don't just take my word for it. In a few minutes, Suzy's Chief Customer Officer, Katie Gross, is sitting down with Rakuten's Nicole Pradell, who manages marketing intelligence. Nicole was an early global audience's beta partner, and the two of them are gonna talk about how Rakuten leverages global research to drive growth. I hope you take a few golden nuggets away from their conversation, and we'll follow that with some Q&A. Thank you so much for joining us today. As always, we're grateful for your ongoing support and that you chose to spend your time with us. Before I turn the virtual stage over to Katie and Nicole, here is Melissa Moxley with a quick introduction to global audiences. Enjoy. Thanks, Avi. Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Moxley, a product director here at Suzy. Today, I'm here to introduce you to global audiences designed to break down silos and bring all your research together in one integrated platform. Let's go ahead and get started. From the Create Action menu, you can go ahead and click on Global Survey in order to get started. With real-time pricing and feasibility, we can make your research more cost-effective and easy to set up. Go ahead and select the country you'd like to target to. Refine your audience further with age, gender, and region targeting. and hone in on the project summary where you can get real-time feasibility and overall project costs. Next on the audience page, you have the ability to set quotas with region, gender, and age. You can see feasibility in real time to make sure your project's a success. And you also have the ability to interlock any of the two quotas that you set up. We also have additional profiling. We went ahead and selected the top 10 most used profiling questions in market research, where you can tar target and further refine your audience as you'd like. Click on primary grocery shopper if you would only like those folks to be targeted in your sample selection. If you don't want additional targeting, you can always select primary grocery shopper or any of the profiling questions on the left, and that data will be appended to your raw horizontal file at the end of fielding for deeper, richer insights. Moving on to the incidence rate. If you don't know the incidence rate of your project, that's fine. You can go ahead and select, I don't know the incidence rate and we'll assume the best and adjust the cost in field. You're only paying for completes, hence the CPI model up here. And with this easy to use slider, you can decide if your audience is very broad or of a more niche audience. All right, moving on to questions. I went ahead and added questions into this project for ease. 
As you can see, I've got my five screener questions here and logic so that I further refine my target audience that will go on to answer my main survey questions. Once I have these questions all set, I can move on to the translation step. Here, we've made it easy for you to download your survey text and enter in your translations in one easy go ahead. Go ahead and save this file. And then I can upload it right here on the platform so that I can see my English questions as well as my Spanish questions all on one easy to read screen. After you have your translations all set, you can go ahead and move on to the final step, which is the review step. Here you'll look at your title, country, language, gender, age, region selections, make sure your quotas are set as specified, along with your questions. Both English and Spanish, all of my logic looks great. I can go ahead and launch my project. Here we go. Let's get in the field. All right, this survey successfully launched. Now that we've launched our survey, let's go ahead and navigate back to the action list where you'll find your projects that you fielded in the US as well as your global projects. I'm gonna click into a project we've already launched to show you how easy it is to download your data. You have the ability to download your raw horizontal or your summary deck and crosstab by age and gender. Once you've opened up these files, they'll look something like this. Here's your raw horizontal with all of your data in one easy to read place, along with that profiling data appended to the end. And here's the PowerPoint download. You can see all of your charts and graphs in ready, presentable format for you to use as you'd like. Don't forget to use cross tabs to help uncover hidden relationships on the insights tab as well. I'm excited for you guys to simplify market research and to gain confidence in your global strategy. Now I'd like to turn it over to Katie Grass. Thanks for joining me. Hello everyone. I'm Katie Gross, Chief Customer Officer here at Suzy. I hope you enjoyed hearing about our global audience offering. For the next part of today's chat, I'm delighted to welcome Nicole Prodel, Marketing Intelligence Manager at Rakuten Advertising to give us some practical lessons in global research. Nicole, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, so let's get started by getting to know each other a little bit better. Could you please tell us a little bit more about yourself and your experience at Rakuten? Sure. So yeah, I'm the marketing analyst for Rakuten Advertising's global marketing team. Um, I work mostly on industry insights and trends, and I break them down into seeing um, to what we are seeing and what we expect to see within our different global regions. So I specialize in affiliate retail marketing, both internal and externally facing data. Awesome. All right. So let's get started on just some general global questions. Could you tell us a little bit about you, your past experience with global research? Uh, sure. So for the past several years, I've actually been collecting advertising industry data and reporting out on retail shopping trends across many of our regions. I first started looking at our holiday shopping trends, but over the years, I've had to expand to look at the entire year. Uh, U.S. shopping is very cyclical but those cycles do not necessarily match other region cycles. For example, Mother's Day happens on different weekends, even different months in the US and the UK. Seasonal shopping, government sale weekends, back to school shopping are also different across different countries and even different hemispheres. So there's always an abundance of trends out there that we focus on to try to have relevant data for all of our clients. That includes being on top of their regions and not just the US's. Yep. Absolutely. And being from the UK originally, I get Mother's Day incorrect all of the time. So I'm, I'm not popular sometimes. <laughs> so how important is global research to your product development? Global research is actually vital to our uh, B2B activities. Uh, when we have enough qualitative data for how an end user in a specific region perceives a product and its features, we can improve our marketing efforts. I think research also helps us attract better customers to our business. Since we are able to provide relevant insights and better value them within our marketing content. Yeah, absolutely. And so how do you tailor your question style to those different world audiences? Big topic. Oh, we constantly tailor our questions uh, and survey data to the various audiences across the globe. 
One of our strengths is really that we have employees in each of our regions who understand their own market specifically and can really help shape our surveys in a way that would work best for specific audiences. The more customized our global survey is, the better at overall performance was actually gonna be. So for example, we actually have a curated list of translation fixes, you could mm -hmm. say, to help us better communicate to our regional audiences. This allows us to not just rely on Google Translate. Um, example would be in the US, we use the word coupon, whereas in the UK, use the word voucher. So Google, Translator, Google Translate translations can often be used in the incorrect syntax, which could actually lead to bias in our surveys, or even worse, a survey question that just has absolutely no meaning to the survey taker. So it really helps to have that in-market translation so we can get the right questions and meanings across to our end user. It's so vital. I spent a long time in global research and I've seen translations go uh, off the rails many, many times. So I completely agree with you. There's a lot of amazing translation agencies uh, we can highly recommend for that in-market translation service for sure. Perfect. So what advice would you give to others who are looking to launch their own global research projects? Sure. So there's a few basic parts to a successful survey. Of course, the audience. Um, take the time to pinpoint who they are and then create some screener questions to focus on the survey to those individuals who you want to hear from. This is going to improve the survey immensely and cut down on a lot of the noise of the result. Um, second, Double check your questions uh, with the goal of reducing bias. I'm often given questions, suggestions by other team members, um, and it's really common for people to write questions in a way they want them to be answered. Mm -hmm. So part of my job is to understand the question's goal, but to try to remove that unintended bias from those questions. Sometimes it's easier than others, but I know bias will hurt the value of my survey, so it's definitely worth the effort. Sometimes I even do a sound check of the survey with colleagues, and ask their opinion about potential bias, um, or I just make sure that they're reading it the way that I intend them to read it. Um, third, I really look at the developing the survey's design and flow. Making sure that the questions are in qualifying order is absolutely important, but it, the order also of the questions, does it make sense to the person taking the survey? Mm -hmm. Does my survey jump between a few topics kind of without any warning, leaving the person kind of a little bit of whiplash? Or does it fully explore their questions relating to one topic before I move on to the next one? So qualifier questions don't just need to be always at the start of the survey. They can actually be used and layered onto each other to help with this kind of flow. Uh, so you wanna be sure that the person taking the survey is in the right frame of mind when they're thinking about each question. I'll even read the survey out loud to myself just to be sure it makes sense when I'm going through it. Um, and fourth, regionalize the survey as much as possible. Check the wording, check the, um, the units of measurements that you're including. Is it kilometers versus miles, Fahrenheit versus Celsius, states versus counties? Um, you, don't want to be the, you don't want the person taking that survey to feel that they were sent a survey that wasn't intended for them. This could either lead them to drop out of the survey before finishing it or just become annoyed and stop answering it accurately. Yeah, absolutely. That was so actionable. Those four key points are vital. So I'm definitely going to re-listen to this and uh, make sure that we are following all four of those action points as well. So how does global research help you tell a richer consumer story? Uh, yeah, so there is so much public data in the marketplace. I mean, the internet is great, but I can't stress how having our own data, meaning that data that is ours, and we fully understand how it was produced is really vitally important. So we know what was asked, who we asked it to, and we know that the data is specific to our place in the e-commerce world. Survey data such as ours allows us to be, be more a little critical of our needs. Um, and often our research becomes the backbone of our story that's giving us enhanced credibility. So whenever we can inject in data into our marketing efforts, Clients and prospects pay more attention. Um, research really helps us show the correlation between a prospect's business problems uh, and the solutions we offer to help solve that problem. So evidence-based content is what our B2B customers are looking for and research uh, is what really fuels this form of communication. Awesome, and I love that phrase, evidence-based content. That's perfect. 
So we're going to pivot a little bit to global research here at SUSE. So I understand that you've used SUSE um, for a couple of different global projects um, while we've been in our beta phase. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about those projects. And could you maybe tell me a little bit more about the multimedia consumption campaign that you then executed? Sure. So um, we recently ran a very robust media focus survey. Um, it was for a European, our Latin American and English market. Uh, we really wanted to understand how respondents consumed connected TV or streaming um, and while they were using messaging apps, using streaming TV. So you're watching it and you're also on your phone at the same time. Um, and the goal was to test our hypothesis that connected TV is a stronger advertising opportunity than just traditional TV, uh, especially in the European markets. Yeah, that makes sense. And so how did you choose which countries you were gonna target for that project? Well, it's um, in one sense, it's, it's easy because we have established media properties in the UK, EU, and Brazil. Um, and we really wanted to gauge the value of connected TV in these markets. Also, our US market is relatively new for our uh, connected TV offering. So we wanted to start to survey those consumer behaviors in this market because we really just wanted to start to form a baseline. Yeah, it's a great idea. And so what types of insights were you able to glean from those different countries? And were there any kind of differences, any similarities you can speak to? Sure. Um, it's really an easy assumption to make um, that all European countries behave pretty much the same, maybe just the language is different. And what we see time and time again is that this couldn't be farther from the truth. France and Germany, they may share a border, but having run affiliate networks in both of these countries for years, I can attest that these two countries are very different. And when it comes to shopping, e-commerce buying, streaming behavior, they're very different. So we knew when we started to survey globally, we couldn't just lump them together. We had to treat each of them as individuals, which meant running multiple versions. Uh, what we learned um, are the important distinctions from market to market. And there's no way we would have known this um, without with just doing a single survey. So simply stated, our research substantiated our theory that we were able to show our streaming solutions and connected TV solution offerings considerable valuable value in each market. This knowledge helped us craft our comms specifically to our agency partners, which improved the overall relevancy of messages in both regions, even though they were a little bit different. Yeah, that's so important as a European, we are British people are wildly different from French, um, but even, you know, I've seen too many times they will take one country from the Nordics, for example, but Finland and Sweden and Denmark are also, you know, very behaviorally different um, in their countries also. So it's important to make sure that you are focused on uh, separating out those markets and understanding those differences. Absolutely. And did you also conduct US based research on that particular project? Uh, yeah, so for most of our surveys and research, we really typically do start with a US component. Um, since I only speak English, it's easier for me to write the survey with a US or a UK tone of voice and then have other regional team members review the translations. So after the survey runs and while doing the analysis for some projects, I have to actively resist to compare the global trends back to the US because what we found is that most countries really only wanna hear about their own data in their own region um, and very few people with the exception of maybe some high sea level folks, um, they may want to see all of the trends compared back to the US, but for the most part, we try to keep it regional. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about some of the other recent projects that you have. I believe you had a finance research project in the UK recently. Yeah, our sales team has been really focused on growing our financial clients in the US and the UK markets. Uh, this doesn't just mean that we need to sign more clients in that area. It means we actually need to increase our company's collective knowledge of that entire space. So finance and retail may go hand in hand, but their trends, important players, terminologies are so different. So to account for all this, we needed insights and current data to start a baseline to track these changes in the marketplace. Um, and all of this started with research, surveys, and reporting. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love the phrase that you had there, which is, you know, you need to sign more clients in that area, but actually that means you need to increase your company's collective knowledge in that area. So vital indeed. Um, and you also had some influencer research in Brazil. Is that right? Yep. So our marketing team, we have a lot going on in all of our different regions and our marketing team in Brazil, um, they really wanted to understand the impact of influencers had on shoppers. So they really wanted to relate better um, an upcoming marketing program to their intended audience. So we developed a multi-question survey 
that served a specific age group who we theorized responded better to influencer communication. Um, and this survey is really helping us form our product offering for that market uh, that's coming up. Yeah, great. And so obviously, Susie, we're all about speed and speed to action. So how important is speed when it comes to your global research? Speed is certainly important to Rakuten. Um, plus, the faster we can get to market with good data, the more relevant it'll be and the greater impact it'll have. In the past, it took us many weeks to build a survey, even more time to field it. Um, it was expensive. And while every vendor has its pluses and minuses, we've really been really happy with the benefit, um, the speed benefit that Susie has. Um, it helps us get to our data to the unmarket faster, which just means it's, it'll last longer. Um, and the data we received has been proven reliable, uh, which really makes speedy delivery of results really, really helpful. That's awesome to hear. So just a couple of final questions and looking ahead, what role do you think that global research is gonna play in our industry in the next couple of years? And what would you like to see? Um, I would say, I think global research being more accessible to the global masses is gonna be really, really important. Um, there's still definitely a language barrier with most region, regional research reporting. And at Rakuten, we publish many of our larger research pieces. When we do that, we do it in multiple languages. Uh, for one, it encourages our English-speaking clients to learn about new opportunities in Germany or France um, that they may have felt were inaccessible to them. But because they couldn't read the regional report, um, they didn't take an interest. And it wasn't because their product wouldn't be able to be sought after by the consumers there. Yeah, so important. Now, we have a lot of researchers in our audiences today. Um, so do you have any general advice for our listeners? Sure, um, kind of touches on what I had said before, but treat each region of the globe individually as much as you can. Um, knowing how regions are unique is extremely valuable when trying to make decisions about the future of your business. What may seem to be a commonplace in your region of the world could be very different reality to somebody else. So being able to identify regionality could save you money in the long run. Also, just as a general rule of thumb, don't fall into the trap of using US as your standard base for comparison. It's okay to start there, especially if you have a U.S. audience for your results. But if your audience is global, you may want to reconsider your talking points, really just to keep everybody engaged uh, and listen to what you're saying. Yep, I cannot agree more. As a European who's lived in the U.S. for 10 years, definitely <laughs> very different consumer behaviors for sure. All right, well, that's all we have time for today. Nicole, thank you so much for being here with me, and I hope that you all enjoyed today's program. Please reach out to your Susie team with any questions and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed the webinar. I'm Tracy Dempsey, Vice President of Customer Success here at Susie, and I'm joined by the wonderful Melissa Moxley, who you just saw give a wonderful product demo, who is our Director of Product for Global Audiences. And we are your hosts for the live Q&A. So please Continue to chat your questions into the chat box on the side. We do have a few questions that we have received throughout the webinar that we will kick us off with. So I'll go ahead and get us started. The first question is, what advice do you have for someone launching their first global study? And I think Nicole offered some really strong recommendations for this. But what I would say is just as with any study is begin with the end in mind. So defining your goals and your objectives of the study. What questions are you trying to answer? What business outcomes will the research inform? And start there. Then as you start to um, define your audience and which countries or regions within those countries you wanna target, um, the platform makes it really easy for you to walk through all of those steps. So as you're defining your audiences, you saw that there are some um, inherent profiling capabilities within the platform. And then we also give you up to five screening questions to further define that audience. So you really wanna make sure you understand who you wanna to talk to, and then you start working through your questions. And as Nicole mentioned quite a bit throughout the webinar, you really wanna make sure that you're working with those global regional teams to ensure that you're hitting on all of those cultural nuances, have them review the questions, write out your survey in English before you go ahead and translate if that's needed um, so that everything's buttoned up before you kick it off. Melissa, would you add anything? Yeah, you know, Nicole really mentioned sound checks, and I loved that. So ensuring that that flow makes sense to the respondent, to that person that's actually taking and reading and responding to the questions um, is really key. So I love that piece of advice that she gave. Awesome. 
All right, cool. So Melissa, a question for you. How long do you expect global studies to take in SUSE? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it really depends on the type of information you're looking to get, right? What's your incidence rate? Are you looking for that really niche audience? Um, or is it more broad? What time of day are you going to be launching? Um, if it's you know in the middle of the day in the US and you're looking to collect information in Australia, you may see a lag in those completes coming in while respondents are still waking up. Um, but on average, I would say it takes about three to four days with some surveys being completed faster. What's really great, Tracy, is within our project summary on that right-hand side, when you're setting up your project, you can actually get an estimate based on the variables that you've defined in your project, right? What's the country? How many completes am I getting? Am I just getting 50 or am I getting 500? All of those things will impact the amount of time that it will take in field. Um, another question that came in that I just want to tack on to the end of that, since we're talking about the project summary, where you can get real-time feedback. Um, someone asked, where can we learn the size and profile of the SUSE's database in each country? And you can actually see that in real time when you're selecting your country, selecting the number of completes, we'll give you the feasibility number right there within that box. Awesome. All right. Yeah, of course. All right, so let's look over here to see what other questions have come in. Um, let's see, so I'm a US-based researcher. How do I make sure I'm launching my survey at the right time to reach participants in my country of research? Okay, that yeah, good question. Good question. Um, in addition to checking the time zone for your country, be sure to check the holiday schedule as well, right? Is it the Chinese New Year? There may be a bank holiday or another national holiday taking place that may affect your time to complete. Um, let's see, Tracy, this one came in. Can Susie help me analyze my global research study results? Yes, great question. So we have a couple different options. So um, as many of you know, Suzy has is a DIY platform. And so you can either run your studies on your own, just using the platform to launch them, or you can partner with our Center of Excellence team, who are a fabulous group of very experienced researchers who have experience both with domestic and global research. And they can do everything from, you know, launching your study to analyzing the data if you choose to you, you if you choose to do that with them. Great question. Perfect. Um, let's see. Um, Melissa, what recommendations do you have when it comes to translations? Um, perfect. So Nicole had some great ones, right? Don't just use Google Translate and really work within your region, work with colleagues who might be based in that location for translations, but always, always start with your questions in English and make sure that you're working with a trusted agency that can help you not only translate, but localize as well. Um, there's many translation agencies that also specialize in specific industries. So those could be helpful depending on what your research needs are. Um, with our product specifically, we allow uh, clients to upload their completed translations right there on platform in a really easy to execute format uh, prior to launching their surveys so we can review it and feel confident about our research. Awesome. Um, let's see, one question that came in was what type of training will we offer for global services? Of course, as a customer success representative, I'm excited to answer that one. So our fabulous team of customer success managers are always happy to jump on. And of course, when you um, take on any new product at Suzy, we will provide a great training from our implementation team or your customer success manager, as well as we also have a wonderful Suzy Assist um, sort of automated training guides throughout the platform to help you as you go. Perfect. Um, this is a great question. Does Suzy have rough estimate just for costs across countries? Um, obviously, it's hard to have absolute numbers, and I did speak to the feasibility numbers being in that project summary. Um, but this is a great way, you know, do they want to plan to budget across multiple countries? I don't know. Um, we can definitely reach, I would say, reach out to your CSM, and we can certainly help facilitate that because we know how hard it is to plan and budget for those multi-country projects. 
Yeah, for sure. And I'll add to that. I mean, that's what we're here for. And so we get these types of questions all of the time. Um, so another question came in is, does is the global tool a subscription product or is it a one-off project? So it is a subscription product, but what we will do as a CSM team um, is work with you to determine what your needs will be throughout the year so that we can best estimate um, what you need and work through your research plan together. Um, so that's what we're here for and we're always happy to help. All right, I think we have answered all of the questions. Um, if we didn't get to any, we will definitely reach out to you. Um, we want to thank you so much for attending the webinar today, and we hope it was helpful. And um, there will be a, a copy of the recording available to you after the webinar. And again, reach out to your um, customer success manager with any further questions. Thanks you so much, Melissa, uh, also for joining me here today. Of course. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks, everyone. All right. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.